Welcome to welcome to tonight's live stream. I'm going to get started in a minute. Just want to let people know that the live stream is getting ready to start on other social media platforms. Okay, tonight we're going to be talking about the topic that you, the viewers, chose in a poll I placed in the announcement section, where it was between goth onomics and stereotypes in the goth subculture. And stereotypes in the goth subculture won by a huge margin, so we're going to discuss that topic in a moment. And before I get started, I want everybody to um, take to go over to Amazon.com and take a look at the books of the Spinsterella trilogy. Spinsterella, Spellbound, and The Legendary Mad Matilda. All three of these are the goth fiction I have written. And all three of these books are available on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. And if you could support these books featuring a African-American goth character. I would really appreciate it. And if you head over to Amazon, pick these up in paperback or Kindle. I would really appreciate it. And Legendary Mad Matilda is available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have that Kindle Unlimited subscription, you can pick up Legendary Mad Matilda for free. And now I'm going to get into the stereotypes about the goth subculture. Now, with the goth subculture, it is a subculture that celebrates darkness. However, a lot of people create stereotypes about goths because it is an alternative lifestyle. And with this alternative lifestyle not being the traditional social norm, we have people who go out of their way to project false stereotypes on people in the scene. And these stereotypes are meant to project a negative image regarding people in the scene and project ideas that just aren't true about people in the scene. Now, the first stereotype I have heard and seen constantly is this whole stereotype about goths being into Satanism and being into demonism. And this is a completely false stereotype about the goth subculture because the goth subculture, from what I've heard and from people in the scene, has absolutely nothing to do with religion. So you have all of these people out here talking about how many people in the goth subculture are Satanists and demon worshipers, but this is not true at all. And when I was doing my research for the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, and I watched over 10,000 hours of goth videos from people all over the world, 100% of those people said that their goth had absolutely nothing to do with religion whatsoever. So the argument that goth is satanic is just not true. And while goth celebrates a lot of 
things that are dark. Again, there were never any sort of worship of Satan or any religion. Some people will wear onks as an ironic statement because they are celebrating darkness and death and the onk is a symbol of life. Others use religious symbols like crosses, not, and they talk about um, they're about those religious symbols in another ironic statement, but it has nothing to do with religion whatsoever. Now, what also goes with this argument is the whole thing talking, again, as related to Satanism, is most people who don't know people in the scene do not understand that there are many people in the goth scene who are Christians, many people who are Jews, many people who are Muslims, and many people who are Catholics, and many of those people are dedicated to their faiths, but they still are a part of the subculture because they, uh, they live on the dark side of life, and because they live on the dark side of life, they see the world from a different perspective, and it's that different perspective that they have in common, and this is what connects most people to the overall goth scene. So most people uh, in the mainstream world, they want to say that goths are, are into demonic things. And again, this is a stereotype that just has been proven not to be true, and it's something that's easily refutable once you sit down and talk to people in the scene or spend time watching their videos or just spend time with people in the scene overall and get an understanding of how of their experience and they'll tell you a completely different story than the stereotype out here talking about how goth is satanic when goth again has absolutely nothing to do with religion now the second stereotype that has been promoted in, ever since the late 90s is that goths are violent. And this stereotype came about as a result of the Columbine mass shooting over, I think, about 20 years ago. And ever since the Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold participated in that mass shooting, the mainstream media tried to tie mass that mass shooting to the goth subculture because Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold wore all black and wore these black trench coats and called themselves the trench coat mafia. However, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the Columbine killers, had absolutely nothing to do with the goth subculture, and it was the mainstream media trying to write a narrative regarding the goth subculture and trying to project that narrative onto goths and trying to make it look like goths were violent, but goths had absolutely nothing to do with that mass shooting, nor are goths violent. 99% of goths are actually non-violent and usually in most cases pacifistic, and them being pacifists, they have no real interest in going out here and participating in any act of violence. In fact, most goths, as I've seen, are introverts, and they usually stay to themselves, and in most cases, they're not looking to go out here and fight someone else in a violent situation. In many cases, they look to conflict resolve and problem solve through negotiation and using logic and reason. Now, usually most goths are nonviolence, and in many cases, they are oftentimes the targets of bullying and harassment because in many cases, many people in the scene are introverts, and in some cases, when they're living in many areas, sometimes they're the only person who is goth in their neighborhood, so they are oftentimes targeted for bullying and harassment, but they are not the ones who actually go out here and perpetrate 
violence on others. So this whole stereotype of goths being violent, this is something that has been promoted in the mainstream media on the regular. However, this is a stereotype that just isn't true about people who are a part of the subculture and want to be a part of the scene. That is a stereotype that is something that desperately needs to be refuted throughout not only the scene but in the mainstream media because this is something that has been pushed for so many years and continues to be a problem even though we have had over 40 years of the goth subculture and there has never been a reported incident of violence at any goth event in those 40 years and that's the thing that really refutes that stereotype because in 40 years of goth concerts and goth clubs and goth bars, we have not seen a single incident of violence. Whereas we could, in contrast, look over at hip hop and we can see old, numerous acts of violence, numerous incidents. And that, in comparison to the goth subculture, which is international, we have seen no acts of violence whatsoever in the goth subculture in those over 40 years. Not one reported incident, and from all the research I've done, nothing at all. Because again, when you have large groups of introverts and people who are practicing nonviolence, they usually go to their events, have a good time, and then they go home. Now, the other stereotype that is pervasive in the goth subculture about goths is one that has to relate to, um, you think about it, has to relate to has to relate to the fashion, really. And it's one where a lot of people think goths only wear black. And this is something that is in the scene that happens a lot. A lot of people think you only have to wear black. However, a lot of goths wear different colors or they add colors to their outfits to make a little bit of pop. So you don't have to wear all black to be a part of the goth scene. However, a lot of people like to wear black and they like to put mix different colors with the black in order to make an outfit pop because a lot of baby bats, they believe that they only have to wear black and that's not the case at all. Oftentimes I've seen goths wearing red, I've seen goths wearing green, I've seen goths wearing blue, goths wearing white, and you can add color to your outfits. And a lot of people would like to wear purple too. So they like to add color to make an outfit pop. And you shouldn't just limit yourself to basic colors like black and white as related to your fashion outfit. Now, this third, this latest, this next stereotype has to relate to race. And there's this stereotype in the media where people want to believe that goth is something just about white people and that the goth subculture was just made for white people. And this is another stereotype that is easily refuted if you understand the history of the goth subculture. And if you understand the history of the goth subculture, you understand that the subculture is a music based subculture. It started in the late 1970s in the UK. And when it started in the UK, it wasn't just white kids who started this subculture. There were black people in the subculture at the foundations of it in the late 70s, throughout the late, throughout the 80s, and even into the prime periods of the 90s and the early 2000s. However, mainstream media won't show you those black people and people of color who have been a part of the subculture. They only want to focus on the white faces in the scene because they want to push 
that narrative that Goff is white. And this is something that, again, is easily refuted when you start looking at the pictures of the scene, looking at pictures of events like Wave God at Trefim, and pictures of Mara Luna, and pictures even across the country of Goths who have been in the scene for years. And there have been Black Goths, there have been Hispanic Goths, Asian Goths, Muslim Goths, and people don't want to put those pictures to show how diverse the Goth scene is because it doesn't fit the narrative that mainstream media wants to present of the goth subculture. All they want to focus on are the white kids and they want to make goth white. However, the goth subculture has always included people of all races and ethnicities ever since its inception. And that's something that many people don't want to talk about, but what I'm starting to see more and more people starting to come out and represent themselves here on social media. And that's one of the most positive things I have seen, you know, in the last four or five years, ever since I started promoting the books of the Spinsterella trilogy. I loved seeing more and more goths of color coming out on social media like Instagram and places like YouTube and telling their stories and telling their sharing their experiences with people and showing that goth is not white. The subculture is not a place where it's going to be all about white people, but it is a place that it has a place for everyone. And I've seen people in the goth subculture come out of their way to fight against racism that is in the scene. And yes, there is racism in the scene, but people go out of their way to push back against it. And that's something positive to see people coming out actively to push against that racism and say that it, ha it will have no place in the scene. And that's one of the foundations as related to the standards of the scene, the people in the scene do push back and they push back hard because they don't want their scene tainted by racism and they, do, they want to have a place for everybody to celebrate their darker view and their darker perspective of things. And that was something that I like seeing as related to the scene is that you have people who do push back hard against it, but all the many of the men and the women, they don't want that racism to be a part of things. They want to include everyone and they have a place for everybody's perspective as related to the subculture. So that's something that I like seeing overall. And it's something that nobody wants to talk about because the mainstream media, what they want to do is make people in the subculture bad guys and they want to make them an enemy because they are living a different lifestyle than the norm. And because they're living a different lifestyle than the norm, most of these media outlets, what they want to do is make them a villain so that people will see feel threatened by people in the scene However, most of the people I've seen in the scene are just everyday people out here just trying to make a living. However, they just live a different lifestyle than most people as related to their perception of the world. And it's just a perception of the world that is different. Most times you have everyday working class people in the scene. They're just out here trying to make a living like everybody else and trying to build families like everybody else. And they are passionate about life like everybody else, you just see the world completely different. Now, in addition to the whole goth is white thing, you have a lot of people out here who, again, they think that in order to be a part of the scene, they think they need to have a lot of money. And this is another stereotype that has frightened many young baby bats out here about the scene is this stereotype that you need to have a lot of money in order to go out here and buy things like all of these kill star fashions which are extremely expensive or to go out here and buy a lot of these designer goth clothing 
out here. And that's not the case at all. The original foundation of the goth subculture was always about doing things yourself, making your own outfits, making your own statement about yourself, and really making your outfits stand out based on your interpretation of how you see the darker version of yourself. That's what the original foundations of the goth subculture was all about. And a lot of baby bats who have gotten caught up in the social media commercialism, they start to believe ideas about how they need to go out here and buy all of these expensive clothes and that they need these expensive clothes in order to have the so-called perfect goth look. And that's very similar to what I had to deal with when I was growing up in the Bronx, where a lot of kids would think they needed to have these expensive sneakers, expensive shoes, and they needed to have these outfits in order to be a cool person. But in the goth subculture, that was never the foundation at all. Again, your outfits were always based on what you wanted to wear. And a lot of times people in the scene, they don't spend a lot of money to create very distinct and unique looks. A lot of times people find their favorite clothes in places like thrift stores or the clearance rack of some of your favorite outlets, or they just find regular clothes out here that are just colored black. For example, I found this shirt at a online retailer called Paul Frederick, and this shirt was on clearance, and I picked it up, um, I think, for $36, and I got it for $36, and it's perfect shirt if you want to build a nice goth outfit with, and I showed it on Instagram, and you can still probably find this shirt on Paul Frederick, um, and you can just make a great outfit with basic pieces. You don't need to go out here and buy a designer clothes from places like Killstar or um, Punk Rave. I mean, it's nice to have those pieces, but that you don't need those type of things to make a unique outfit for yourself. And when I was writing the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, I really wanted to focus on making your own outfits because that your outfits are an expression of yourself. And I wanted to show the Matilda character making her own outfit as this look that she has as related to the Black Widow. And it was all related to her personality and that's what your outfit should be focused on, something related to your personality. But this is a stereotype that I'm starting to see with a lot of millennials and Gen Zs is that they are believing they have to buy all these designer clothes. And that really is not something that anybody needs to do to be a part of the scene. Now, these goth stereotypes, they really prevent people from seeing the truth about people in the scene. They prevent people from seeing the truth about people overall, and they just project stereotypes about people in the scene. And it's something that's quite troubling, but I, I, as I see it, these are stereotypes that need to be pushed back against because when you have people out here buying into stereotypes, what they do is they create false pictures about people. They create false ideas about people. And they also create ideas that just aren't true. Now, other stereotypes I have seen, in addition to the fashion and race and things like that, um, a stere other stereotypes I've seen are related to a lot of people believing you only have to listen to goth music in order to be a part of the scene. And that's another thing that's not true at all. Yes, the music is a part, of, is the most important part of the scene. And it's a core foundation of the scene. And you have to re listen to the music and understand the music in order to be a part of the scene. But you don't have to listen to the music all the time. And this is another stereotype that is interesting that you have people who think all you have to do is listen to goth music all the time. And 
that's not the case at all. You don't have to sit there and just listen to only goth music. Many people in the scene listen to other kinds of music. They listen to hip hop, they listen to R&B, they listen to jazz, they listen to classical, and, oh, I'm gonna get to that um, canyon in a minute, and I'm gonna get to that one, but they have this idea that oh, only you only can listen to the goth bands like Susie and the Banshees, The Cure, and Sisters of Mercy, and that's the only thing you can listen to, but you're a human being, and if you like other music, you can listen to that music as well. So a lot of people think, oh, you can only listen to goth music if you're a goth, and that's that's just not true at all, and it's a stereotype that desperately needs to be shattered. I mean, yes, you are celebrate you are being a dark you are into dark things but you also are allowed to have fun with the things that you like to have fun with so that's something people in the scene it's a stereotype that again needs to be pushed back on because you can listen to whatever you want but but you have to understand that the core foundation of the of the of the subculture is the music and once you understand that the core foundation of the subculture is the music and that you need to listen to the songs and understand the songs and what they mean this is something that is core to being a part of the scene for example when i was writing the novel spellbound this title of the book and the story was inspired by Susie and the Banshee's song Spellbound and when I heard the song talking about following the footsteps of the ragdoll dance entranced this is what made me think about black people and how they follow in the footsteps of this ragdoll dance entranced by white people and want to fit into the black box that's acceptable to white people and they only want to fit these ideas that white people have about black people and play into the roles that they have. And that's what leads to the Matilda Crowley character walking away from those stereotype roles and walking down the road of the goth subculture to be her own person. And Legendary Mad Matilda was a story based on and inspired by the song from London After Midnight called When Good Girls Go to Die. And I was making a commentary about how black girls, when they go into corporate America, is like a place where you go to die. Um, and that was based on what the London After Midnight song, where good girls go to die. And I always made that com. I wanted to make a commentary about corporate America because it's a place where a lot of women, you know, they wind up losing themselves because they get caught up in chasing a career. But then the story is about Matilda finding her own way and avoiding dying in that whole corporate setting. Now, as Kenyon pointed out, there is a stereotype about goths being this emo and they like to cut themselves. And this is a completely false stereotype overall because a lot of people believe that people in the goth subculture are depressed, that they're down, that they are always in a somber mood, and that's not the case at all. I, and I've listened to countless videos from people in the scene. I have talked to many people in the scene online. And yes, everybody has a bad day here and there because goths are human beings, but goths are not this emo who is depressed. In many cases, if you watch many videos of people in the scene, you'll see lots of people who are happy, lots of people who are enjoying life, and lots of people who are having a good time in life, and they're not miserable at all. And then this other part of the stereotype that goths love to cut themselves, and this is another lie that has been put out there about goths, and it's not true at all. There are, yes, there are some people in the scene who have some issues, but that's a small, small group that have those issues. But there are people who outside of the scene who do cut themselves and have these issues. And this is another lie that has been put out there that only goths are out here cutting themselves, but there are people outside of it who are outside of the scene who are into 
this type of behavior. And the people who are into this type of behavior, they are struggling with mental health issues and nobody wants to see the mental health issues that are going on with those individuals. And what they want to do is label that person and project a stereotype on them instead of seeing that this is a person struggling with a mental health issue. And that mental health issue is causing them to do self-harm. And that mental health issue is something that needs to be addressed by a mental health specialist and a mental health counselor. But this is a stereotype that is projected onto people in the goth scene. However, they, this is not something that is just common to goths. Now, the other part of it is a lot of people lump goths with emos and that's not the case at all either because the goth scene is completely different from emo and if you talk to a person in the goth subculture they will tell you that emo and goth are two different things but the mainstream media loves to project that stereotype onto both emo and lump emos and goths in the same place because they see them wearing black clothing and because they see them wearing black clothing they believe that they are all the same thing because the mainstream media wants to go out here and push stereotypes because they just don't like people who live non-traditional lifestyles and because those people are not living the way that everybody else is living what they want to do is make them out to be the villain of the story and make it make them look to be bad guys in the picture. Now, the other stereotype as related to mental health is that goths are suicidal. And this is something that has been presented throughout the mainstream media regarding the goth subculture for decades. And a lot of people, they think because black goths are dressed in black and they celebrate dark things that they are dreary, depressed, and are so depressed that they are suicidal. And they think because they celebrate things like death, they actually want to kill themselves. And this is another false stereotype that has been promoted and projected in the mainstream media for years regarding people in the scene. However, once you start talking to people in the scene and you get to know them, you start to see that this is something that just isn't true. And many of the goths I have talked to online, they are not suicidal. Many are happy. Many are enjoying life. Many are having a good time. I mean, all you have to do is go to a Comic-Con and you'll see goths having a good time. And I've gone to Comic-Cons and you'll see people in the scene having a good time with people who aren't in the scene and they are just enjoying their life and you'll have people talking about oh they're suicidal but I, well, not from what i've seen in many cases i have seen people just going out enjoying life having that good time and they are happy with their lives i mean if people are supposed to be so depressed and suicidal then why are they doing things like going out here and going to parties, going out here, and doing things like getting married, going out here, having children, going out here, having families. I mean, I've seen people in the scene, they're having great lives, they're doing, they're living life, and they're having a good time just living life. So that whole stereotype about goths being suicidal, that's not true. All you have to do is go to Instagram and you'll see goths just having a great time and enjoying their life. You'll see goths smiling, goths who are happy, goths who are just having a blast. And again, all you have to do is go out and you'll see goths in out here living their life and enjoying their life. I mean, you go to Comic-Con, you go to comic book stores, if you go to toy shop stores, where guys are collecting action figures, or you go to a rest, watch wrestling, you'll see goths having a great time. So the whole stereotype about goths being suicidal, that's another one 
that isn't true. And it's something that is projected in the mainstream media and promoted in the mainstream media as something that is a part of the Garth archetype. And it's just not something that's true at all. Is this whole Goths are suicidal, Goths are depressed, Goths, you know, are hating life. And that's all based on the stereotype that because they celebrate dark things like death, they want to die. But that's not the case at all. In many cases, Goths are living and Goths are enjoying their lives and having a great time enjoying their life. So that's something that all you have to do is just talk to people and you'll see that that's not true at all. And it's something that, you know, is easily refutable once you go out here and talk to people. So they talk about, oh, goths um, want are suicidal, and that's not true at all. Now, another stereotype has to do, again, with the mental health aspect. And there are people out here who project the stereotype that goths have, are some sort of crazy. And while some people in the scene are struggling with mental health issues, they are not this suicidal or crazy person who is completely out of control. Now, when it comes down to most of the mental health issues I have seen from people in the scene, it has to do primarily with anxiety and depression. And that depression is, in some cases, it's been treated with medicine and the small group that it's out there. And a lot of times the anxiety is the major mental health issue I have seen with most people in the scene. A lot of people are struggling with generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder. All of these are things related to being an introvert. And these are things that usually in most cases, when you have people on the scene and they're having these issues related to mental health, they are actually in counseling and they are in some cases, as they are getting counseling for their social anxiety, they are out here and they are on medication. And most people in the scene who are dealing with these issues, they are actively working with their doctors towards working on a solution for their mental health issues. So from what I've seen from people in the subculture, there is a very active engagement in working on mental health issues. And many people in the scene are open about talking about mental health issues as related to things like social anxiety and things like depression and they all they will openly talk about these issues to people i've seen people in videos talking about them and talking about medication that they have taken and they've also talked about things like counseling and therapy so when they are out here and they are dealing with the mental health issue they are open about it they are actively discussing it and they are making efforts to work on it. And that's something I have not seen in places like the black community, because in the black community, we have a lot of mental health issues going on with people, but we don't have the active engagement we do like in the goth subculture. In the goth subculture, you will see people openly come out and say, yes, I am struggling with anxiety. Yes, I am struggling with depression. And yes, I am on medication or yes, I am in therapy or counseling for this. And I am looking to work to resolve these issues. And I'm actively looking to move past these issues so that I can live a better quality of life. It's not like in the black community where you have a lot of people who are ashamed of their mental health issues and have been shamed into silence about their mental health issues. And this is something that in the black community, people don't want to talk about on the regular, but in the goth scene, people do talk about 
their mental health issues and they are constructively working on their mental health issues. Um, George, we are talking about stereotypes in the goth subculture and this one is a live stream dedicated towards refuting many of the false stereotypes people have about people in the goth subculture and stereotypes that are inside of the scene overall. Um, oh, Kenyon, yeah, I can I can address that. In addition to the mental health, yeah, the stereotype that goths are lonely, that is another complete lie. And this one I know not to be true because I have many people online that I talk to. And from what I've seen, most of those people, again, have lots of friends. They're having a good time. They're enjoying their lives. And they are just having a great time. And they're not lonely. They just find other people to go hang out with. Now, some people are the only goth in their own community. And because they are the only goth in their community, they can't find other people to be a part of the scene in their area because there is no scene. So, But they still have friends outside of the scene. And sometimes they do go to other places to meet other goths or they go on social media to meet other goths. But goths aren't lonely in a lot of cases. A lot of them do have friends friends who aren't goths and they're comfortable with people who aren't goth and those people treat them with respect so they are people out here they're not lonely they just some people because they're introverts they prefer to be alone now introverts people don't really understand introverts like myself i'm an introvert and usually you want to spend more time by yourself because being around people it can be more draining because you're, you're, you get more energy by yourself. And that's something a lot of people don't understand about introverts is that an introvert is usually they like to spend more time in solitude and they like to also spend time that's more quality with people. So they usually don't like large crowds. That's a lot of things. People think that, oh, that they're lonely. But a lot of times when you're an introvert, a lot of times you're more comfortable by yourself than you are with other people. And that's something a lot of people don't understand about the introvert. They think that the introvert, you know, because they don't like, they're not around other people, that they're lonely, but they are just, they're just not, they're just more comfortable um, with smaller groups of people. And they like to have more substantive conversation. So when you're doing it, when you're hanging out with an introvert, they usually like to talk about heavy subject matter and heavy subject material. And they look for meaningful conversations. They just don't want to just be in a group of people and be there and there's nothing really going on. Introvert is about the quality of the time that they spend with people, not the quantity of the time. So they will have friends, but it's just the friends that they want are very, they're very close to they're very intimate with and when you have an intro, when you have an introvert you will be friends with somebody and that person will be friends with you for years a lot of the times their friendships go 10 20 30 years but that's because they are very close to those people and luciano asked do you think goth will be mainstreamed and fall out no it won't be mainstream because it's a subculture and when it comes down to the goth subculture people in the scene, they are very protective of their subculture. And I've seen this firsthand. I mean, people have tried to do things to commercialize the scene and try to push it to the mainstream, but people in the scene push back because they don't want their scene destroyed the way they saw hip hop destroyed. And people in the scene love their scene and they don't want to see it compromised and commercialized and mainstreamed and made into a caricature of what it is. And they don't want the foundation of the subculture to be, which is the music, to be completely lost. So there is a love of the scene from the people and they don't want to see it turned into a mainstream product the way hip hop was turned into a mainstream product and made into a pale caricature of itself and because they don't want to see that that's why it won't be mainstream i mean i remember when they were talking about killstar and the commercialism a lot of people on the scene did not want to see the subculture turned into this 
whole commercial thing where it's just about selling products, what they wanted to do is they wanted to make sure that the foundations were in place. They, they didn't have no problem with people making money, but they wanted to make sure that they protected the foundations of the subculture so that it would not be made into a joke the way hip hop was turned into a joke. And they don't want to see the subculture and the people of the subculture turned into clowns and caricatures the same way, sadly, hip hop has been turned into clowns and caricatures. So there's a great love that people in the scene have for it, and they will push back against anybody trying to mainstream it and turn it into a commercial thing. So there's there's a lot, of, there would be a lot of resistance to that. And they don't want to see that happen because once you mainstream something, then that leads to the stereotypes being made more normal and promoted as the norms for the overall what a goth is supposed to be. And there is no one definition, but there is one standard. And that standard is the music. If that's the main standard for the subculture is the music, because the music is what inspires everything from the art, the literature, the fashion, all of that comes from the foundation of the music. So everything that comes from the subculture comes from the music and the music is special. I mean, after listening to a lot of the music, when I was writing books like Spinsterella, Spellbound, The Legendary Mad Matilda, and even the book I'm working on, Eternal Night right now, the music is something that is integral to any part of the subculture, and it's integral to anything related to the subculture. I can tell you that the messages in the music are distinct, the messages in the music are important. And if you're going to be interested, if you're going to be anything in the scene or interested in anything in the scene, you have to really sit down and listen to the music. That's something that is the main standard. And if you don't, if you want to be a part of the scene, you have to listen to the music. So that's something a lot of people a lot of the younger ones think that they can't do, they don't have to listen to the music, but you do have to listen to the music to understand the messages in the music. And as someone who has taken a minute to listen to the messages in the music, this is another, again, relates to the whole satanic stereotype. This is something I can say, the music isn't something with messages of Satanism or demonism. Yes, there are dark themes in the music, but the music itself is far less harmless than anything I have heard on any gangster rap CD uh, or gangster rap music. I mean, you can listen to goth music and it's far less offensive than any gangster rap music or any of this modern rap that I have seen so far. I mean, you don't hear any profanity or promotion of violence. It's just music that talks about dark things and talks about the dark side of life. And again, most people think that that music is bad, but that music is completely harmless from what I've heard. And as someone who has heard gangster rap in the 90s and heard all the foul things said on things like Two Life Crew or some of these hip hop albums, a goth album is from a band like Sisters of Mercy or Susie and the Banshees, you have nothing to worry about whatsoever as related to that music overall. Glad to see you here, Rob IS. Um, how are you doing? We're talking about stereotypes in the goth subculture, and I'm going over many of these stereotypes that are that are inside the scene or projected in the mainstream about the scene, and I'm refuting a lot of these stereotypes because they need to be talked about. And my viewers voted unanimously. I mean, a good 70%. They voted for this live stream and I wanted to give them this live stream last week, but I was dealing with headaches um, as related to this temple over here. So I couldn't do that stream, but I'm glad to be able to do that stream tonight 
for my viewers. Um, that's a Luciano. That's a good point. Um, no, most goths I know they're they don't come from rich families, and that's a very false stereotype about people in the scene that they come from all this money. But most of the people I've talked to in the scene, they don't come from a lot of money. A lot of times they are working class people. They um are from usually middle class or poor families, and they. The whole scene actually started from poor people in the UK and the US from the punk scene. And a lot of those people, they were buying clothes out of places like thrift stores because they couldn't afford brand new clothes. So a lot of the people in the goth scene were never these rich people. So that's a really stereotype that is completely false because most of the people who started in the scene, they came from the punk scene and the punk scene was all about people who didn't have money now most of the goths again they didn't have stores like dracula clothing or kill star or cat von d makeup um in the early days of the scene so they had to go to the thrift stores and make the clothes that they wanted and it wasn't until the 90s that we started to see fashion designers um yeah they used to shop at army surplus stores too and a lot of the rivet heads used to shop there as well um, and then rivet heads are a separate group. A lot of people like to lump them in with the goths, but they are separate, but they do go to the same events. Um, but all of them used to shop at places like army and Navy surplus stores, um, thrift stores. They used to shop the clearance rack and they would get their stuff from these stores. They would make their own outfits. So it has nothing to do with people being rich, even though, Goth has no economic class because a lot of people, they come because they like the music. And that's the main reason why they come into the scene is because they love the music and they like to go places where the music is. So it's not just rich people. And again, the foundations came from poor people, just like hip hop primarily came from poor people. And that's something people don't want to talk about. And it's something I do believe needs to be talked about because in this age of people going out and believing they need to go get these expensive clothes from places like Killstar and Punk Rave in order to have a per so-called perfect goth outfit, this is something that really needs to be discussed more often it is this whole thing that you believe you need to have this perfect outfit. And that again takes me back to my high school days when kids thought we needed to go out here and buy the Jordan sneakers and the expensive jeans in order to be cool. And that's not something that was ever a standard in the goth subculture. And that's a stereotype that's starting to form among millennials and Gen Ys and Gen Zs is this whole, I need to go buy this perfect outfit and while people in the 90s looked at those outfits and were like, oh, I might want to get something like that, in most cases, people were just out here, like myself, they would find some cool piece of clothing that was black, and they would make their outfit from that, or they would make it from a band shirt and some jeans or some nice boots, and they would make their outfits based on what they wanted to be their style. So that's what they primarily made their outfits out of was basic regular clothes. And that's what I still make outfits out of basic regular clothes. I mean, I found some nice boots on a place like Samuel Windsor first. place like Samuel Windsor. I mean, they come from the UK, but they have some really nice, you know, boots for a pretty decent price. I mean, they got, these were some Chelsea's I was wearing for a while. I was wearing these for a while, uh, practically warm into the ground. I'll leave a link to those and they didn't cost me that much. I got them on sale for $70, brand new. Um, yeah, people do wear Doc Martens, but you can wear, you know, different types of shoes that are really 
affordable. I wore those, like that link to Samuel Windsor, I wore those for a long time. Um, they came out with a new pair with rubber soles and So I like to dress up a bit, but I find stuff like that. It doesn't cost that much. I mean, sometimes these um, new rock boots, they can cost anywhere from two to $300. And some of the um, demonias can cost a good price. But I found, you know, different for my style and different styles, you can find pretty nice stuff in different places for a good price, brand new. And I've done that. And... You can make anything into any outfit that you want. Like, um, Like they have the slim fit version of this shirt that I have on right now with Paul Frederick right now. It's like $14. Um, um, there are different subcultures in goth, but I don't want to get into it raw by us because um, most goths just see themselves as goth. I mean, there are rivet heads and there are other groups like steampunk, but as I see it, goth is goth and it's all about you know, celebrating the darkness, and that's what it's about. So I don't want to do different factions because a lot of people, they want to stay united. So, but I was just, I was leaving links to different fashions um, and showing you that you could make your own outfits if you wanted. Oh, there's only one size here, but that same shirt is here that I'm, I'm wearing right now for $13 um, on Paul Frederick right now. And that was, that was in the clearance section. And I guess, because when I first came here a couple months ago, it was it was in large, large quantities. But it seems like some there was a run on it. So, But when I picked up the shirt, again, it was only $39. It was down from $89. So you can find great stuff. You just have to go and dig for it. And that's, that's one of the things I want the baby bats out there and people in the scene to understand is that lots of great stuff out there and you don't need to go out here and buy a whole outfit from Killstar or decorate your whole house with Killstar or Punk Rave to be a part of the scene. You can go out here and put on some nice stuff and put together a really cool outfit just with basic pieces that from places um, like your thrift stores or even if you want to go buy brand new you can head over to any of these stores out here and just find anything for an outfit um um luciano it's a very interesting question um what is the stereotype that people use golf as a coping mechanism when dealing with a hardship um, that's not something I've seen with people in the scene that I know of. They don't use goth as a coping mechanism. Basically, they come to the scene because they have a dark view of life. They have dark experiences, and they have something in common. I mean, goth is something that usually comes from in here, and it's something that is a part of that person. So it's not a coping mechanism. It is a lifestyle. It is a way of life. And it is something that is a part of a person, and it is something that they that is part of them. They're not sitting there using this to cope with. This is just part of their perception of the world and part of their way of life. They just see things from a different perspective than other people, and it's something most people don't really see. They think that it's just 
oh, it's just something they're doing to deal with things, but it's no, it's just that they have a completely different view than other people. Now, where the coping mechanism cliche comes from some people who have this idea that goth is a phase, and that's primarily where that comes from, because that's another stereotype people like to project is the whole goth is a phase. And that's another stereotype. Thank you, Luciano, for bringing that up, because it's something that I believe needs to be discussed is this whole goth is a phase thing. And some people, they sit there and they think, oh, it's just something that your, your, your teenager is doing because they are being teenagers and that they'll grow out of it. And that's not the case at all for a lot of people. I mean, some people, they come into the scene as teenagers and it's something that they see for a while, but then they find out it's not what they, the life they want to live. So they leave the scene and there are others who come to the scene and it becomes their lifestyle. So that comes from the whole stereotype of goth being a phase and that once you come out of your teenage years, you stop being a goth. But I have run into people who have been a part of the scene all the way since the early days of the late 70s and 80s, the elders who were in their 40s and in their 50s, and they still have the dark view of life. They still dress in the goth aesthetic, and they still listen to the music, and they are still part of the scene. So you still have people who have been in the scene for 30 and 40 years, and some people have been here 20 and 25 years. So it is not a phase for those people who have been in the scene that long. It has become their lifestyle. So that whole goth is a phase thing is just not true. Uh, some parents want their kids to stop dressing and be living this lifestyle. And because they want them to stop living that lifestyle, they want it to be a phase. And yes, it is a phase for some people because they come into it, they find out it's not the lifestyle they want to live, and then they just leave. Then there are others who stay in the scene because they find friends here, they find a lifestyle that they feel comfortable with. And with many introverts, they find people who they can be close to and relate to. And that's one of the reasons why they stay in the scene because they feel safe there. And that's another main reason why a lot of people stay in the scene is because they feel safe there. And when you're an introvert and you find a space where you do feel safe, in many cases, what you do is you'll stay in that space and that's the main reason why people, a lot of people do come to the scene and stay to the scene. It's because they've met a lot of great people there. They feel safe in those places. They feel comfortable there. So they, they don't want to leave the scene because it's, it's like a home. And a lot of times when you're an introvert and you find a place that's like your home, you don't want to leave that place. It's like you feel this is a place where you belong, a place where you feel safe. And that's the main reason why people have stayed because they feel that safeness there. So that's the main reason why they stay. Yeah, that's true with Luciano. Um, a lot of people feel that safety and security. And when they meet people in the scene, they, a lot of people, they feel they can trust those people. They feel like they can be, feel comfortable with them. And they get that feeling of being at home. And it's that feeling of being at home that really it makes people feel connected to each other. And that's why they stay in the scenes, like, because you can't, you don't feel that way in around other normal people, but you feel safe with people in the scene. And that's that connection that brings people together. So that's one of the things that really brings people together is feeling safe. And again, when you have things like anxiety and you're struggling with that or issues like that, you want that place where you can be safe and secure. You want that place where you can be comfortable with others and you can feel comfortable about expressing yourself and you can feel comfortable about being among other people because when you go around other people in the so-called normie world, in a lot of cases, you have to deal with a lot of criticism, people telling you that there's always something wrong with you. And a lot of people like to come to the scene because they feel like this is a place 
where you're not going to be told that there's something wrong with you and that you feel like you're perfectly fine as you are. And that's something that people in the scene like, and it's something that means a lot to them. So they don't want to go out here to these other places because it's just a hostile environment. People always finding something wrong. Whereas you can go over here and you feel comfortable and you can just, you, you, you're feeling accepted. So, so that's the main reason why so many come out here and are a part of the scene and want to be a part of the scene because the thing that they push is like everybody, especially with the conformity, like when I've seen in the black community, they push a lot of this conformity. Everybody has to fit into this stereotype box. Whereas in the goth scene, you can be yourself even, and the only standard is, is the music, but you can make your own um, picture of yourself and you can feel comfortable among others and not be attacked for being who you are. So that's one of the main reasons out there. And so that's, those are some of the stereotypes in the, about the goth subculture. And that was some of the stuff that a lot of people, they have these ideas about the goth subculture. Um, Luciano asks a good question. Why do people assume that you're goth because of hardship and cruelty? Well, a lot of goths have to deal with things like being bullied and harassed. And a lot of people, they were dealing with that beforehand. And that was something that I went in depth on with Spellbound was that the Matilda Crowley character, she was going through bullying and harassment before she became a part of the goth subculture. And she was dealing with people attacking her. And again, she came into the scene because she felt she was a place where she was accepted. But before she came there, she started to build her self-confidence by putting on the aesthetic of the Black Widow. And that was the whole Black Widow was about building her self-confidence and her self-worth. And again, a lot of people, and they were being bullied and harassed before. And the whole thing about finding the goth subculture was finding other people they could be with and other people they could have relationships with. But a lot of times, once they find those people who have the same views that they do, a lot of times, a lot of times people on the scene do brighten up and they become a lot happier and they start to really enjoy life. And again, these are all stereotypes that have been pushed about the goth subculture and these stereotypes they could they do real damage again to people in the goth subculture and they do got overall stereotype to the image of goths all over the world um i think i've covered a lot of the stereotypes about the goth subculture and i'm hoping that everyone has learned something more about these stereotypes and how harmful they are to people in the goth subculture. And when it comes down to people in the goth subculture, you have to see them as people, judge them based on the content of their character. Don't judge them by the color of their clothes. And to treat people in the scene with the same respect you would treat anyone else out here with and to just see people as people, even though they have different a different viewpoint of the world, people in the goth subculture are, as I've seen, some of the nicest people I have ever run into, some of the friendliest people I have ever run into, and some of the um, most fun people I have ever run into. And I'm really glad to have gotten to know a lot of people in the scene online and i'm really glad that a lot of them have gone out of their way to support you know things like books in the smisterella trilogy and have gone out of their way to try to share a lot of the videos i do on the goth subculture because I, when i do these videos and these live streams it's so that people can see that there are black people who support the scene there are black people out here who care about the scene and that 
be seen is not just white people and it's not filled with stereotypes, it's filled with lots of great people. And to give those people some voice and to get the message out here. I know a lot of goths watch my channel on the regular. I know that they buy my work and I've talked to them. So I really want to see, you know, more substantive content dealing with things like introverts, social anxiety. And that's why I do the live streams because I know that some people that's not their specialty, but it is something that I've had experience with. So I want to get that out there about, you know, being an introvert because it's something I've dealt with ever since I was a kid, dealing with social anxiety and dealing with some of these stereotypes because people misunderstand everything about introverts and social anxiety and the struggles of social anxiety um, every day because doing something simply is asking a question is a, is a struggle for an introvert or a person struggling with social anxiety. And this is something that isn't really, I haven't seen talk too much about in the scene. And a lot of young kids, especially a lot of the baby bats out here, they're struggling with this. And I wanted to see more done in it. And that's why I did some of the live streams talking about dealing with shyness and social anxiety. And I also want to do, he I like to do heavier subject matter because I feel many of the goth YouTubers, they, they focus on the fashion and they focus on the music, but I wanted to focus a little bit more on heavier things that's related to interpersonal skills and social skills and social anxiety. And I also want to focus on, you know, some of the harder topics like the stereotypes and the goth subculture, because this is stuff I believe it needs to be talked about and it needs to be dealt with more in depth. So these are things that I like to talk about, but I want to see discussed more often in the scene. And I'm hoping that you learned something from this live stream. Um, I would really appreciate it if you guys would go out here and pick up the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, Spellbound, which is about Matilda's baby bat years, um, Legendary Man Matilda, which is about her, what I call the adolescent phase in the goth scene, where she's in the industrial and rave scene and is starting her professional career and Spinsterella, where she's an elder goth. And I would also appreciate it if you guys would pick up the books of the 2019 catalog, like John Haynes' Dark Succubus, which is some darkly inclined fiction, which everybody seems to love, and um, Isis All That Glitters, which is where the goddess next door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber, and Eastine Goddess of, and all three of the books in the SJS Direct 2019 catalog are now available on Kindle Unlimited. So you can pick up all three of these books for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And if you want to pick up a great darkly inclined piece of fiction, you can pick up The Temptation of John Haynes on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format. And if you are darkly inclined or a part of the Garth scene, you're going to really enjoy this story so i urge you to pick those up and if you want to help me make more videos like this you can donate to the patreon by clicking the link in the chat or you can donate via cash app by clicking the link in the chat and that helps me be able to make more videos. And I want to talk about a Kickstarter from one of my friends, um, two of my friends, actually, John Shellum Jr. and Sergio Cajada. This is the Goth Ghost Girl comic book. And this is a very fun series that I think most people in the scene would enjoy. Um, it's like Batman the Animated Series, and it features a goth heroine. I think you're definitely going to enjoy this one. And they've got the Kickstarter up for the third issue um, which is called Summonings, and I really want to see more people in the scene pick up this great comic, so I'm going to leave a link to that as well. And this comic is has already been funded, and the first two issues have already been funded, and you can pick up all three issues of Goth Ghost Girl Summonings in, over at that Kickstarter. So this is definitely one you want to pick up. Glad to see you here, Soul Provider. I'm getting ready to wrap up the stream on stereotypes in the goth subculture. And this is a great comic, and I definitely want to see you pick that one up. I mean, I know a lot of goths watch my channel. So 
get the word out about this goth ghost girl comic book and please please pick up a copy of the temptation of john haynes i definitely believe you're going to enjoy this one um john haynes is a character a lot of people like and i think people in the scene would like him as well um luciano what was your question again before i wrap up the screen i'll see so just let me know what your question is i get ready because I don't know if they process self-actualization better than normies, but the whole thing is that they actually they, they are working towards self-actualization, and that's all part of embracing that side of themselves, that darker side of themselves, is that that's part of, they focus on self-actualization because that's just something they want to do because they want to be comfortable with themselves or secure in themselves. So, yeah, some, some people in the scene, they have found self-actualization by embracing that darker perspective on things so i could say that it was as part of it um but i'm gonna get ready to wrap up the stream and again i'm urging you guys to please pick up a copy of the temptation of john haynes john haynes dark succubus and the books of the spinsterella trilogy i think you'll enjoy the books of the spinsterella trilogy um because they present a positive image of a black girl in the goth scene and i wanted to present a positive image of the scene overall i'm hoping you pick up my work and i'm hoping that you learn something from this stream and i hope to see you again on the next stream because i really like talking to you guys i like listening to you guys and i wanted to give you guys the best stream possible as related to this topic this was the topic you voted for and I'm hoping to do another goth live stream in the future. And if you have suggestions for a topic, I'd be glad to talk about that in the next stream.